Eye Glaucoma Presents, a video series. The MST Trabex or Trabex Plus is my preferred blade for abinterno goniectomy. The trapezoidal design of the dual blade allows for custom wide TM excision for every patient. The handpiece for comparison is a little lighter and a little wider than some other goniotomy blades. It feels more like a highlighter or a sharpie compared to a pencil. As for any gonio surgery, you want to make your para just anterior to the limbal vessels. I like to use intracameral lidocaine for anesthesia, then visco, and then again a main wound that's just anterior to your limbal vessels. You want to avoid bleeding that'll seep onto the cornea and obscure your view. This is a nice example of the onfos view of the trabecular meshwork that you want anytime you are doing angle surgery. Starting off here with the Trav X blade, you'll see you engage into canal and then you can just slide along here, excising TM. It does have a very sharp tip that can engage the back wallish limbs canal, so sometimes you have to adjust your hand as you follow the curve of the eye. I usually do just a forehand long sweep, but I'll sometimes backhand a little bit to get some additional trabecular meshwork. And then viscoelastic there just to get a look at the cleft. This is just another example of the nice wide goniectomy that you will get with the trapezoidal design of the Trabex blade. It fits to the canal of each patient to allow for optimal wide TM excision. You can see that back wall of Schlimm's canal, bright white, for about three clock hours here. This looks good. I also really like to use the Trabex blade or goniectomy in general when I'm doing a phaco and angle closure patients. The heel of the blade is blunt so you can use it safely for goniosyneculysis as you'll see here and then you can proceed as usual with the goniectomy. This is great for patients with angle closure because you're opening the angle and then you're addressing the presumably diseased TM that's been behind those synechiae. And then I'm just showing off the cleft here at the end and you can see how nice and open this angle is with hopefully improved outflow. Moving on to Trabex Plus, this has an added feature of irrigation and aspiration. The continuous irrigation allows for perfect chamber stability. This is great for folks who are learning angle surgery. You don't have to worry about the loss of viscoelastic. This stability also reduces blood reflux, so it's better for your view and better for the patient in their postoperative recovery. Incision size is ideally 1.8 millimeters, but I think it works just fine through a standard phaco wound. And just check out this really nice long TM strip. You'll see pigmented and non-pigmented TM thanks to that trapezoid. Irrigation does obviate the need for viscoelastic, though I would recommend using it in the beginning as you get used to moving in and out of the eye with this sharp blade. And then you have aspiration available if you need it for blood or pigment or even a strip in your view but usually you will end up needing to remove a TM strip. My favorite way is just with the Utratas, as you can see here. This can be done safely pre-FACO with a viscoelastic fill, or you can wait till the end of the case with hydrated incisions or viscoelastic in the eye. As long as the chamber's stable, you should be able to grab it at the base and pull slowly. And then of course you have to show it off on the cornea and make all your surgical staff look at it because you're going to get these nice long TM strips that have both pigmented and non-pigmented TM. How cool. And then alternatively, sometimes the strip will show up at the end of the case when you're doing your IA. Sometimes it'll come loose and suck into the IA tip, sometimes it won't. So if you don't want to refill the eye with viscoelastic and use a Utrata, you can hydrate your incisions, as seen here, and then call for a micro forcep of some sort through your side port, and you should be able to grab it and pull it out this way without collapsing the chamber. It's also totally okay and probably safer to leave very small strips or tags alone. 
Those are my tips. Thank you for watching. Please feel free to contact me with questions or collaboration. After surgery, do you want some help with post-operative mix management? Do you wonder what post-operative management looks like on day one, day seven, or day 30? Well, check out my post-operative mix management strategy guide. It's a step-by-step -step treatment roadmap for routine mix cases. Look for the link in the description box below.